Hello. Welcome to this special video. Yeah. Today we want to tell you our story, our real one. Um, we know we already have a video telling about our relationship, but it's very short and we today we want to, we want to tell you step by step how we met. So we want to tell you the, the whole story, everything. Once upon a time. <laughs> it was 2011. I was in New Zealand because I was studying at the Fitiraya Performing Arts Center, acting. And in July, my mom decided to come to visit me for the first time. Uh, no one of my family never came to visit me, so my mom was the first one. And I had my show on and then holidays. And we wanted to do something special for my holidays. I have to do a step back and tell you what was when I was little. When I was a little girl, I watched a lot of documentaries about Polynesia, um, all the islands, and I always dreamed um, of going there and visit those places one day. Back again to 2011. So when my mom was supposed to come and she started organizing the trip, I said, Mom, please, I have holidays, let's go to Samoa. I want to see that island so bad. And I didn't know anything. Well, I had a lot of Samoan friends um, in Wellington, but I didn't know nothing about the island. So I went to a travel agency and I asked the guy um, where to go to sleep, like a nice place, cheap, but very nice, that was there and he, I remember he said to me well there is this place if you really want to have a traditional experience and go deep into the Samoan life um, in the island of Savai there is this place called Tanu Beach Falles and it's one of the best places you can find so if your mom is okay with really Spartan place you you too can book here I said okay okay we we go here, it's done. Um, so my mom arrived and after a trip around uh, the, the North Island, um, we took the plane and arrived in Samoa in July 2011. So I remember we arrived in the night and uh, we couldn't see anything because it was so dark. In the morning, I remember waking up and see all those beautiful flowers and everything was it's so green. Thing. It was so warm. So, oh, I'm already loving it. And then um, a van came to pick us up and to take us to the wharf. And then we had to take the ferry to go to Savai. And in Savai, we had another van coming to pick us up to take us to Tano Beach in Manasse. And all the way from the wharf to Manasse, I was just, wow, wow. I remember I was like, oh my gosh, I'm in paradise. Um, the street that goes to Manasse is next to the, the ocean. And I swear, I've never seen those colors in my life. And it was just amazing. I was speechless. I couldn't even believe that such a beautiful place could exist in this world. So I was very excited. And then we arrived at Danu Beach Palace. This lady called Frida came to welcome us, giving us two coconuts to drink, two new to drink. And that was our first experience in Samoa. So then she took us to our fale because Sun Beach is very famous to have beach fales. So you sleep in this hut and you see the sea. And um, 
that was our first day there and um, I saw that there were a lot of kids around and also a lot of tourists so we started to know all the other people all the other guests I went to for a swim and I got burned like the first day I got so sunburned um, anyway I went for a shower well on my way back or something like that anyway I was walking around and I saw awesome. this this guy playing this Argentinian guy playing guitar with some of the kids of the village and I stopped there so oh, hi where are you guys what are you guys doing so we started singing and he told me oh these kids are teaching me someone I oh, know this was Friday the day after um, I was walking by myself around uh, the place and I recognized one of these little girls and she was sitting in one of the fathers with the other cousin and so I went to say hi to them and uh, they told me to stay there with them and um, with a paper we started writing down all the words from English to someone like they, they started teach me, to teach me the language and I didn't even notice, well, while we were talking, I noticed there was a guy at the back of the fire <laughs> who was sleeping, like with an eye open, and, but sleeping pretty much. And at one point, uh, this girl, the, this little girl, Giuliana, she, <laughs> Giuliana <laughs> she was teaching me how to say beautiful, our lele. And this guy wakes up and so cheesy saying to me, Oh, you are beautiful. <laughs> and then, well, this guy was him. <laughs> and then he came close and he asked, <laughs> me Giuliano, close. you came close to us and asked his cousin, this girl was his cousin, something in Samoan. And I knew he was asking something about me because I saw the cousin laughing and then looking at me. I, they were talking and looking at me. She asked me for my age and other information and I knew that was Remember, for you never, him. you never ask a lady for the age. Yeah, but that's mm. what you did. <laughs> In the night, there was, was the Fia Fia, the yeah. show that all the guys were doing for tourists and I was there with my mom and he performed the, the fire dance and oh, I was like wow that's oh, what wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fire dance no <laughs> and at the end of the Fia Fia um, everyone from the village uh, was there dancing with tourists and was actually like putting music and there were the boys asking girls to dance. <laughs> so, do that again, eh? <laughs> so he came and asked me to dance. But then after the first song, he passed me to his cousin. I was like, who is this guy? Where is Fiala? Anyway, that was the first day we met. <laughs> that was like this. Um, the day after was Sunday, so Sunday. they they don't work on Sunday and my mom wanted to go to the beach but I was really really sunburned and um, I said okay I'm going to stay in our fale to read a book so I was just sitting outside my fale and I saw under the tree that was next to our fale Fiala with all these aunties and yeah, people yeah. yeah anyway I saw him and said Clean. hi yeah. you know I'm very open and nice and I don't have any problems but apparently some people are very shy and the moment I say hi to him he's like I want to disappear <laughs> <laughs> because he was there with all his aunties so he say hi back like hiding and then I said, oh, you can come here to talk if you want. You know, I have no problems. Ah, I remember that. After pushing a little bit, he finally came over. So, well, and he was standing in front of me to, to speak to me. He said, well, you can sit, you know, like no one bites you if you sit next to me. 
And so slowly he came next to me and we started really laughing about stuff and yeah. I don't even know where we were talking about I'm just <laughs> laughing. From that moment on, we spent every day together. The day me and my mom left, we cried the whole day. His auntie even told my mom I had to stay. It was very sad for everyone. So we said to each other, okay, let's see what happens from now on. This one woke up and we had to go pick her up and uh, prepare her and do some stuff. Me and my mom arrived in Auckland and after, the day after I received a, a call from a strange number and I called back and said, hello? Hi, it's Viola. <laughs> Oh, hi, oh my gosh, already! <laughs> From that time, we started talking every day. Um, oh my god, every day. But, 24 hours. Fiala didn't have a phone, a cell phone. So what did I have to do was, I had to call his auntie, and then she had to go and find him in the village, and pass it to me. And that went on for a few months. October. Yeah. So all these months we talked and we were like, okay, what are we going to do? Are we a couple? Are we together? What do we do? And then we decided that I was going to go back in October. So I went back and I was so scared to go back alone to someone that I saw just for 10 days that now was my boyfriend and I didn't speak any someone so I was freaking out and well I went back and the first night that I was there he introduced me to the entire village like he actually Which took means me my, it's my whole family then. <laughs> he took me around like door by door go inside and I don't even know what he said to the family or the family was saying to him anyway we were just there all night to the whole family and I got yeah, I got introduced as his girlfriend I spent all the rest of my time in New Zealand uh, working, saving money flying to Samoa and uh, staying a little bit with him and then going back to New Zealand to work so what happened was that I had to graduate there was my graduation and I said to him I really would like you to come to visit me in New Zealand and you can tell this part my uncle trying to make my visa to go to New Zealand for her graduation. And they say no. And they say no. And the immigration say no to him. The immigration say no because they didn't pass my interview. And when he told me, we were on the phone and that was <laughs> so bad. Um, we were crying and oh my gosh, still crying. I remember that night. We were crying and he was like, you know what, let's break up. Um, there is no point in going forward in this uh, relationship because I can come to New Zealand. Your life is there. What can we do? You know, I can't travel. And um, oh yeah, it was really hard. I think it was one of the toughest times of my relationship because we yeah we don't know what to do you know we decide to look up and, and that is the time I created our first YouTube video. Um, the purpose of that video was to find help in the internet in the world of internet um, of someone that went through our own like, our situation. Um, so we didn't break up, we didn't say okay, there's always a solution, let's stay together, we will figure something out, let's not give up. Um, so after that, 
Mm. Uh, during one of my studies, no, when I went to Samoa, one of the many times, um, he proposed, and that's another video. <laughs> We got engaged, but there was still the problem. Where is my cousin's ring? <laughs> Java. <laughs> we still had the problem where to go to live, and that time now I'm getting emotional again. I was going through a very, <laughs> a very hard time in New Zealand because I was just working. I was alone, my family was on the other side of the world, he couldn't come um, and every time I went to Samoa, him and his family really made me feel um, like I was part of the family and so I started missing my family even more and the fact that I was alone, no families in New Zealand and um, well, it was becoming hard. We decided that we um, to try to move together to Switzerland, where I'm from, and um, that was the easiest way to to finally live together. Oh but we didn't know <laughs> that to do that. We had to go yeah, through so no, many I documents. There was the Swiss Embassy in Wellington and I had to go there to apply for his visa. They told me what documents he needed to uh, prepare for them to prepare the visa. Yeah. So we had to take an appointment with the Swiss consul in Apia. Yeah. So I had to fly to Samoa, meet him and we had to go to his house, his house and sign documents in front of him yeah. and then we spent yes. how many days? Three days, Three four days, days, four days yeah. around up here yeah. preparing. Plus you had to pay all those things. Yeah, of course. In American um, dollar. Yes, of course. US dollar. We had to pay documents in American dollar. Once we finished that, <laughs> I had to collect all of them fly back to New Zealand, going to the Swiss Embassy office, yeah. leaving yeah. all the documents yeah. and yeah. there is when we started to pray. Yeah. Do you want to tell them what happened yeah. the, the day we got an answer? I woke up and I got a phone call from Tanya. How many calls? I don't know, 200 calls, I don't think so. And yeah, and she said I got a visa, I'm like, oh! So wait, I think that was the best day of my life. You're making it very Nando. easy. Nando. I was trying to call you and you were not picking up. I said, no, that day I have something to tell you. You're not answering your phone. Um, and you actually told me that I had to call you later on in the day and I was dying. I just wanted to tell him. So when he finally had time to talk to me, I said, you have to sit down, okay? Do you remember say that? Yeah. Sit down. He's like, why? What happened? I didn't get it. I, I didn't yeah, get yeah. it. I said, like, no, you just sit down. And then, well, I think I screamed. Yeah. And what happened next? And then, we had to find my ticket. Then, yeah. My ticket, because it's really expensive. And you guys know that the visa is free to come in Europe now. After, like, they don't need visa. They don't need visa. After one year, after my one year here in Switzerland. Yeah, they was, changed, ah, changed, changed the law the and now um, people from Samoa don't need visa to come what here as tourists. I flew to Samoa with all my stuff and he got his small luggage. We say goodbye to everyone. We went on the plane, that was his first time ever on a plane. So 30 hours of, fl of flight for the first time, that's intense. And we arrived here, that was winter, so there was snow. Oh my god, it's amazing. <laughs> and I my have first to... time here, my first time in Europe, even my first time. Oh, it was a really good experience for me, you know, everything was new. This is called how we met and our story. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Um.
Um.